All right, just going to take a few minutes here to show the absolute hypocrisy of the Stephen Anderson cult and all of his cult following his little preacher buddies and things that are all under his authority. I will prove that here in this video. Um, I'm going to show that and I'm going to show you the hypocrisy of their stand that they take. Let me show you a little bit here. Adultery is worse than murder, according to Stephen Anderson. Listen to this. Because if you actually look up the Old Testament law, hey, if people commit adultery, they're put to death, period. It's just a death penalty every time for adultery. You know, both the adulterer and the adulteress are both put to death. His blood shall be upon them. Their blood shall be upon them. There's no exception. We're okay, and then he talks about whereas murder, there's exceptions. Of, okay, so, and then they teach that the some of the uh, laws of the Old Testament are gone, but the, the, these moral laws are still here. The adulterers should still be put to death. See, I don't believe that. Well, listen to this. No, you would no, not cheat with no, them. No, and I, and I believe that anyone who commits adultery should be put to death. Really? Absolutely. So really? Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, well, guess what just came out? That uh, one of Anderson's original little cult members, uh, Donnie Romero, has not only committed adultery, but with multiple prostitutes. Listen to what he says here. These things need to be confronted head on. And so I'm just going to mention you know, what the sins were without going into detail. Basically, the, the major sin involved was being with prostitutes. And then there were also marijuana and gambling that were also discovered. So anyway, again. Okay. Um, now, he's saying this after they put Donnie Romero to death because he's an adulterer. I mean, with multiple prostitutes and things. Oh, no, wait. Uh, they didn't put him to death. He was just forced to resign. But I thought back here, Anderson said that, uh, you know, yeah, I believe adulterers should be put to death. Because, see, there's no dispensational change there. Right? There's no Old Testament law and whatever else and, th and think, no, no, we should still be putting people to death. And, of course, they, they like to rail on sodomites and things, and sodomites should be put to death. But uh, when one of their own commits the sin of adultery with multiple women, uh, well, that's just kind of, just you know, look the other way. Yeah. And I find it so ironic that they're coming out so hard against Peter Ruckman, and they're going after Ruckman because he had trouble with his marriages over the years and things, and, and he had scriptural grounds for divorce, too. Again, these papists here, see, in, in Catholicism, marriage is a sacrament. It's a holy thing, and you say your vows, and it's, till death do us part. And I've had these, these uh, Hiles-type Baptists, and they'll do the thing, the, you know, the Bible says, till death do us part. Uh, no, that's a marriage vow, okay, that you say in your sacrament there of marriage, of holy matrimony, all right? Um, the Bible gives grounds for divorce, all right? Real sorry, but it does, okay? Fornication is grounds for divorce, Romero's wife has a right to divorce him. That's right there. And again, you know, oh, you're, you're attacking a guy when he's down and blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm showing the hypocrisy of this cult here. That they can stand up and they can say, hey, should we put to death? And then, oh, one of our own does it. And, well, we just kind of told him to step down and, and uh, you know, whatever. But look at Peter Ruckman. Oh, look how evil he was. When Peter Ruckman had scriptural grounds for divorcing his first two wives. Okay, they stepped out on him, they committed fornication multiple times, and he actually tried to reconcile with them, and they said no. Again, these guys, they never bring out the details of why Ruckman was divorced, and then this little sick timeline of Peter Ruckman's life thing here that they did, they actually show at one point the thing of Ruckman's son, Peter Ruckman Jr., uh, killing himself, committing suicide, and killing his, his two boys first, after Ruckman was dead. You see, th this is called hypocrisy. Uh, Donnie Romero, well, yeah, he sinned, and, and we're just kind of, you know, let's pray for the family. We, we believe, we teach that, that you should be put to death for committing adultery, but, uh, but boy, look at Peter Ruckman. Let's, let's blame him for something that happened that his grown son did after Ruckman was dead. After Peter Ruckman Sr. died, <laughs> Peter Ruckman Jr. kills himself and his two sons, and, and these losers here... Blame Ruckman for it. And I find it so funny that these guys come out and they attack dispensational teaching. They come out with their whole a dispensation of heresy or whatever the thing's called, this new documentary. People have been sending me the link like crazy. What am I what are you going to answer it? I'm going to be getting around to answering the thing. It's you know comedy to me. 
But I'll be coming around to answering the thing. But the whole point is, I just find it so funny that after they come out and they're calling dispensation dispensationalism a satanic heresy, and we're we're we still have the Old Testament law. One of their own comes out and fornicates with multiple prostitutes. He's a married man. That's adultery. Okay? And they'll tell them, well, it's not, it's not, you know, see, and they're going to have to redefine what it means, by the way, to make it not adultery. They'll say, well, um, he was with prostitutes, so technically that's fornication. And um, what if they're married prostitutes? You know, it's it just idiotic. But they're going to try to redefine the thing. You mark my words. They will try to redefine the sin to make Romero not guilty of adultery. Romero is an adulterer. Okay, he's married man. He cheated on his wife. He is an adulterer. Ruckman never stepped out with prostitutes after he got saved. He was a wicked man before his salvation. And back then, yeah, <clears throat> he did fornicate a lot because he was lost. Again, these little, I got saved when I was two years old, people. They, they have no concept of that. They have no concept of how wickedly you can live as a, as a lost man or woman and then you get saved. And they'll oftentimes go back and point out the errors of somebody before they got saved. You know, just incredible. But check this one out. This is this is the little loser here that came up with this whole, uh, this new documentary about dispensationalism and whatever else. Little Bruce Mejia, bunny boy. Let's listen to this guy. Human government. After the great flood, humanity responsi uh, responsible to enact the death penalty. <clears throat> Ends with the dispensation, or excuse me, the dispersion at the Tower of Babel. Some use the term the, the Noah law in reference to this period of dispensation. So they say that was a different dispensation. When, when, when God gave government to the people to execute, to kill the sodomites, to kill the adulterers, that was a different dispensation. We're not under that dispensation. Here's the thing, though. The law, the, the law of the Lord is perfect. Amen. Hey, the law of the Lord is the Ten Commandments, stupid. Uh, that's, it's converting the soul. Okay. Again, non-dispensationalists, you know, whatever. But my whole point is, he teaches that adulterers should be put to death. Just like his little cult leader, Andersnake. He teaches that. So, uh, and he comes out with this little documentary and things, and they're attacking Peter Ruckman all the way through it. Oh, Ruckman's a, Ruckman had scriptural grounds for divorce. What about Romero? Did he have scriptural grounds for, you know, fornicating and committing adultery with prostitutes and drugs and gambling on top of that? But see, Oh, we, you know, Ruckman's a terrible, horrible heretic and dispensationalist are dangerous and it's a dangerous heresy. But oh, 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 one of our own guys, uh, he just did it. So, uh, you know, uh, he just sinned really horribly. But we're just going to kind of quietly put him away. There. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see, this movement comes from Jack Hiles. Jack Hiles that was habitually fornicating with his deacon's wife, Jenny Nishik. His own daughter admitted. His daughter-in-law, I believe she admitted it too. Um, you know, Victor Nishik, the, the husband of Jenny Nishik, he admitted it. A lot of church members have come out and say, oh yeah, we knew about that. That's this Baptist system. I'll tell you right now, I have never been to one Baptist church that didn't have sex perversion problems in it. And it was just kind of a, well, let's just kind of you know, quietly just, you know. These things are filled with perversion. Absolutely. And especially when you have this elevation of the man of God. And he gets up there and he's this great man and everybody comes up, oh preacher, oh you're so wonderful and everything else. Yeah, the guy gets a power trip, and then he thinks so well, he can just kind of, you know, do some sinning on the side, you know, and whatever else, and I can get away with it because I'm the man of God. Mm -hmm. But let me just show you the proof that this is a cult, all right? Right here, this is the video. I'm not going to go through it, but but here uh, Romero comes up, and he, he reads this little prepared statement or something off of his cell phone, which is really kind of odd, and then Steven Anderson has to come up and explain everything. Um, uh, I thought Stephen Anderson was the pastor of Faith, or uh, what is it, Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. Why does he have to come here and answer for this guy? Doesn't the guy have his own deacon? Doesn't Romero have his own deacon? Wasn't he the pastor of this church? Isn't it up to the local church to be independent and to judge things within themselves? Why does Anderson have to come and do uh, damage control? And then listen to what he says. Some guy asked a question here in the in the audience. You can barely hear it. Uh, I'll have to probably increase the volume a little bit. But but listen to what this what Anderson says. Yeah, my apologies for coming out a little late. No so, problem. Uh, what I heard uh, when I came in uh, is that Pastor John.
Todd to Shelly is going to take over the turf. So yes. He's running pure words back to turf. So, so as an outsider, is, is he going to uh, pass up both churches? No, this is going to be his church. <laughs> okay. Now, it doesn't really matter to go into a whole lot of that, but the fact is, Anderson literally says, he comes in and he says, oh, I think we're going to be putting Jonathan Shelley in here to, to this church. We're going to move him here. And, and um, yeah, you know, and somebody says it's going to be open to a vote. Well, kind of not, not really. And here he just, yeah, he's, he's going to be the one pastoring it. You have no vote. You have no say. I thought it was an independent Baptist church. Self-governing. Oh, no, that's right. Their cult leader has to come in. He has to come marching in, and he has to tell them how things are going to be done, and the people have no say in the matter. Hey, we picked a guy to replace Romero. We're going to stick him in here, and that's going to be that. Sorry. Um, this isn't how Baptist churches run things, independent Baptist churches run things. This is more like a military KPOC type of a thing. Um, you know, little little thing here of the, the underling he he's messed up so he just kind of stands up and cries oh, I, i'm sorry I, I messed up and then okay get out here and then the commanding officer comes in and just lays it out to the people this is the way it's going to happen uh yeah okay and let me just get back here i'll just just show you this this kind of weird thing here uh did i get it right i'm trying to get details or something like that because i love you guys Church, love my family. This is the best decision is for our, my family in this church to make. We plan on staying here as members of our, of this church. As members of this church, um, why on earth would you stay there? Okay, first of all. Secondly, why didn't he? Why wasn't he man enough to come up and stand there by himself and say, um, "I have to admit to something." I'll tell you a little story from my childhood. The church I used to go to and I was raised in, Calvary Monument Bible Church, there was a pastor, Brian Boykin, and I remember the one Sunday morning, he gets up with his wife standing beside him, and he says, I had an extramarital affair, I committed adultery, my wife has chosen to forgive me, and so I praise the Lord for that, but I am no longer qualified to be the pastor, I'm leaving. I'm stepping down you know, immediately, and we're leaving right now, and I'm sorry to everybody, I'm sorry I let you down, and whatever else. That took character. That was a real man. This reading stuff off of a cell phone and, and you know, whatever. It's weird. And then Anderson gets up there and, and okay, this is the way it's going to be. We're going to appoint so-and-so. That's not an independent Baptist church. That's a cult run by a cult leader that is a stinking hypocrite. Oh, adulterers should be put to death. But he uh, just committed adultery with multiple prostitutes. Not even women, just regular women in the church were prostitutes. You know? Just absolutely disgusting. And you know, and you say, of course, I'm gonna get people saying, Oh, see, he, you know, Denlinger believes in sinless perfection. Uh, no, I don't believe in sinless perfection. And I'm not judging this guy's salvation, Romero's salvation, because of what he did here. Okay, that is a, it's a very, very serious and egregious thing. But I judge that guy's salvation. I was saying he was lost years ago, right? Why? Teaches replacement theology, teaches that the, Jew, that the Jews in Israel are not legitimate and, and they're fake and whatever else. He's a postie. He's non-dispensational. Jesus burned in hell. There is no repentance uh, associated with salvation unless it's turning from unbelief to belief. He's preached a false gospel, in other words. And you can go on and on and on. Sodomites should be killed and, and their reprobate doctrine and all this other stuff. That's why he's lost. Okay? And, and by the way, you say, well, uh, should we have sympathy for him? I have no sympathy for him if he continues in this system. Um, my sympathy for Donnie Romero would come if he finally is broken and he realizes I've been part of a, a false cult. I've been part of this thing, and I need to repent and get out of this thing. Anderson is a cult leader and whatever else. Then I'll have some sympathy for the guy. If he truly comes to the Lord broken and says, I messed my life up. I'm not, a, I'm not truly saved. I'm not born again. You know, okay, I'm going to have sympathy for him. But uh, again, just, just think of this thing here, all right? Think about it. You get this 
Anderson cult, and they're they're claiming all this stuff. Adultery should be killed. Adultery is worse than murder. It's just terrible. They should be killed. They should be murdered. Oh, Romero comes out. He's with multiple prostitutes. Let's just kind of have him step down and let's pray for the family. Okay. <laughs> um, why the favoritism? And then the the hypocr hypocritical attacking of Peter Ruckman. And, and laughing and, and mocking dispensationalism and saying, oh, dispensationalists are so stupid. The, the laws of, of uh, you know, stoning an adulterer, they're still there. They're, it's still supposed to be there. Okay, then kill him. There's your opportunity. Do it. Stand by your convictions. Right? There's a whole lot more I could talk about here, but, you know, I just... I'm trying to get other stuff done right now, and, and I'll be back to doing videos before real long, but it's just stinking hypocrites is what these guys are, right? And Anderson, again, he's in bed with the Catholic Church. I'll put the video at the end. I'll put a link to the video at the end of, you know, working with the Catholic Church, the Universal One Church in South Africa with Oscar Bogart. Um, he's a hypocrite. He's a total hypocrite. These guys are, I believe, tied in with the military. I believe that there there's a it's a KPOC uh, civilian psychological warfare type of a thing. They're coming out trying to make us look bad. So before you run off and you say, "Oh, I saw him and I, I saw him crying. Oh, I feel so bad for him. he's a false convert. He's a false preacher that's been lying about the Bible believing movement." I have no more sympathy for him than I do when I hear a Catholic priest is is outed as being a child molester. I have no sympathy for these guys. They knowingly are teaching false doctrines. And he's worse than a Catholic priest in the sense of he's trying to make people like you and me, as Bible-believing Christians, he's trying to make us look bad. And see, again, look at what this is going to, look Look how the media is going to spin this thing. They're going to say, see, these King James only people, look at what hypocrites they are. They're not King James only. They're not, they're not even really truly saved. I hope the guy does get saved. I hope that this breaks him enough that he'll, you know, lower his pride and come out and say, yeah, I was false the whole time. I hope he does get saved. Let's pray that for him. But don't say, well, let's just not be rough on him. So that's going to be it. Uh, thank you for watching.